Yes, beta carophylline, the dietary cannabinoid. We'll see if we can get through everything in three minutes. Alternative title for this one is Pandas and Horse Shit. I'm Lex Pelger. I do can education for CV Sciences. We are makers of Plus CBD. Check out the link in the link tree. Beta carophylline is the most unique of the terpenes because it is the only terpene to bind to a cannabinoid receptor. It binds to the CB2 receptor that is on every organ of our bodies and is closely related to the immune system. This helps to explain the host of benefits that we see below, and the FDA has given it grass status, generally regarded as safe and is approved as a food additive you can just put into any food. You might also know about beta carophylline from cloves, rosemary, hops, oregano, and green leafy vegetables. It also is known for giving the smell to black pepper. Beta carophylline tends to be one of the most commonly found terpenes in cannabis plants, and it's especially in a lot of hemp plants, which is good because there is an entourage effect that seems to happen between CBD and beta carophylline. In a mouse model of Dravet syndrome, the severe childhood epilepsy, superior results were found when they combined CBD and beta carophylline for the inflammation, behavioral disturbances, as, and the brain immune cell reactivities. This also makes sense because we know that beta carophylline binds to the calcium and potassium ion channels, and those are in the brain and they regulate the excitability of neurons, so basically helping to calm things down. Also, in a rat model of spinal cord injury, CBD and beta carophylline work better together for the chronic pain. In general, beta carophylline has been found helpful in animal models for neuroinflammation and things like protection from stroke. And most of what I say from here on out is going to be in animal models, but there's a reason that people like this stuff. Uh, for instance, in elderly mice who underwent an operation, oral beta carophylline lessened their neuroinflammation dramatically. Help has been shown for anxiety and depression, as well as substance use disorders. And in women, it has actually been studied for food addiction. It is especially well studied for inflammation and oxidative stress, and it works by a lot of different pathways to get that done. Uh, one of my favorite examples is in a rat model of pulpitis, which is the inflammation of the pulp of the inner part of your tooth, beta carophylline reduced uh, orofacial sensitivity and inflammatory markers. It's been found to lower pain via the opioid receptors, including neuropathic pain, which is especially hard to treat. On the skin, it's demonstrated improved wound healing and in bones, improved density and volume. A whole host of studies of how it's protective for the liver, the bladder, the digestive system, and the heart from all kinds of things. Heart attacks, obesity, diabetes, cancer treatments, it protects the heart. Uh, and asthma, beta carophylline has lowered lung inflammation. And finally, the pandas. Beta carophylline has been shown to improve your tolerance to cold. And so when it gets cold out, pandas are known to roll around in horse manure. And horse manure is very high in beta carophylline. So they might be doing this to protect themselves from the cold. So if you can't trust the pandas, who can you trust?